Well, it's Monday night. That means it's time for Dylan Talks Tone on YouTube and on the internet. I hope everybody's having fun tonight. I guess the broadcast has now started. The broadcast is no longer ending or beginning shortly. So that's pretty sweet. And it is uh, time to go. How are you? I'm good. All right. So tonight we're going to talk about some fun stuff. Um, these these questions I got from the internet over the past week. So we're going to talk about coil splitting humbucker and what the right way to do it is because there's a lot of, mm, well, people try to do it and it doesn't work very well. So I'm going to demonstrate a couple of things. We've got a humbucker guitar here with one type of humbucker that does not split very well and one type of humbucker that does split. So we'll be able to side by side see the, the thing and then I'll tell you how they're wound so that we can talk about that and, um, and that sort of stuff. In fact, I even made a little graphic for that and everything. Coil splitting, can it ever sound good? Absolutely. It totally can. And we're also going to talk about can you add tone to a guitar by putting some putting features into it so um, we're going to use the jazz master over here and we're going to discuss um, what happens when you put things in a guitar um, and we'll talk about specifically what that means uh, Leslie you are over there talking to people already so if you wouldn't mind let them know uh, how they can be a part of the show tonight all right. If you are listening to us on kprlive.com, we are also live over on YouTube. And you can find us on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Dylan Talks Tone. And there's a live video going right now. And there is a live chat as well. So super fun. Come hang out with us and let us know if you have any questions. And just feel free to interact and, and meet some fellow friends as well. Yeah, it's been super fun to be able to have that kind of interaction going all the time on the YouTubes. Um, it's really what has kind of fueled this whole thing. So I, I really dig it. And having this live interactive q and um, I had a couple of people from a couple other like radio shows and podcasts and stuff send me messages like, this is the only thing really like this. So um, we really want to try to make it grow and bigger. And I don't know if you noticed or not tonight, y'all out there in the internet land, but we sound better, uh, at least here in the studio. It sounds good in my head. It does. <laughs> this new board has made a huge difference. Uh, some of the work that we've been doing around here to make all this stuff sound good. Wait till you hear the guitars through the system tonight. It sounds amazing. Um, the way we're recording, the way we're doing all of this stuff is just it's getting better and better all the time. And you all make that possible. Um, we did have somebody use Super Chat last week. If you want us to drop what we're doing and answer your question, uh, we will drop what we're doing and answer your question if you use Super Chat. We really do appreciate that. Um, so that that is also very awesome. Um, before we get going on our one of our subjects tonight, uh, what's going on so far? Everybody just checking in and saying hello? Yes, and... Um it was kind of cool. Like there was a couple of names I wasn't familiar with. So everybody like took a moment to kind of like introduce themselves and say a real name and where they were from. So no, that's great. I really appreciate that too, because, uh, screen names is one thing, but when people really want to be part yeah, of it, and I know, really noticed, um, I mean, the audience is connecting, you know, outside of the show, maybe they met here, but you know, staying connected otherwise. And they, it's, you know, it's, it's almost like they look forward to chatting with each other during the show. So it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah. It's not just about talking during this hour right. on Monday they night. They get it's, to chat with, you know, and follow up with somebody from last week too. Yeah. So. No, super fun. No, I dig it a lot. Uh, um, let's see. A couple things um, happened this week. Uh, there's an article. It is on my Facebook page at Dylan Talks Tone where Dr. Z... Mm -hmm. did an interview and he discussed what he thought about Kemper and modeling and the 21st century. 
And the bottom line is he thinks people need to get with it. And uh, he says it's not a bad thing. Go read that article. It's very interesting. Even from an amp builder's perspective, uh, he felt like there was opportunity in it for him, even though people were modeling his amplifiers. He took the initiative to jump on and and do things himself. Just go read that article. It's on our Facebook page, Dylan Talks Tone. Go check it out and and leave your thoughts on that article, on that post, because it's very interesting. It's just a very interesting uh, perspective, I thought, especially from a guy who, you know, most people will say, well, Kemper is like pirating amps, stealing their soul. But he had a very different and very positive and constructive perspective on the Absolutely. whole thing. Absolutely, yeah. And and it is all, it is one that I really, really, really can get behind from my perspective. Um, you know, as we share this content, so go go check it out. Very cool. Um, guitar player for Judas Priest got Parkinson's crazy drummer from mr big died of parkinson's this week uh i think this week i think that was this week um which is which is weird our heroes are getting old um apparently robert plant played in our state last night uh in charleston maybe mm, and charlotte was it in Charlotte, North Carolina? Well, the people I saw posting about it make me think it was probably in Charlotte. Everybody said he was amazing. Right. And everybody said they were glad that they didn't do a ton of Led Zeppelin stuff. It was very interesting. There was like uh, kind of a one third, two thirds. Most people were like, I'm glad that he is just making his own music. And some yeah. people were like, well, you should get the band back together. And the other people were like. Old stuff is old. I mean, like how old is he now? 70 something. Oh, I mean, wow. he's, yeah. So, but the thing is, he's still making new music. Right. Right. Like, he's not Led Zeppelin anymore. Right. He's someone else. He's, he's, he grew up. He grew up. Let him grow up and let him make new music. Very interesting uh, perspective on that thing, too. You know, I'm always jumping on conversations that have to do with progress and, and new. So, very cool. Um, let's see. What do we want to talk about first? Let's talk about, unless there's uh, questions rolling in. Um, oh, we have one viewer saying thanks for the help earlier. So on our Facebook page earlier, um, in fact, we can talk about this. Let me grab this guitar right here and we'll talk about the question that came up earlier really fast and just kind of spread it around so everybody knows. Okay. We'll use this jazz master as an example. Um, one of the things he was asking about, and I will see if I can show this a, li a little more up closely. He was asking about putting a 24 fret neck onto a Telecaster. So different guitar, same concept. It's a bolt on neck. Um, and the thing is though, you would think that you could just put a 24 fret neck on the guitar and everything be fine. However, the distance from the 12th fret to the high E saddle right here has to be uh, 12 and three quarters, right? It has to be half of the scale length. This fret cannot move in reference to this here. The neck gets longer though. So that to add the 24th fret, the neck comes further this way. So what happens when you put the guitar, the neck on the guitar, that will move this fret further away so what you have to do is do one of two things either take some off of the end of the neck right here or take some out of the neck pocket so that the neck can sit further into the guitar if you have the room down here it depends on the guitar <coughs> sometimes you don't have the room because the pickup is so close already that like if this guitar we had a 24 fret neck, I probably could make it happen because there's enough space. But on some guitars, depending on the pickup, that if you had a humbucker here in a Strat, for instance, it would be so close that it would be very difficult to take that out, that area out. So that's why most people try to design all of that together when they're putting the guitar, when they're putting a 24 fret neck on a guitar. But it can be done. You just have to 
either take some off of the end of the neck, which I would not recommend because it's harder to do. And it's honestly, it's easier to mess up. Um, I would actually take more out of the neck pocket and move the guitar, move the, move it for this way, closer this way. Um, which is kind of another thing is to related to that is like putting a strat neck on a telly and a telly neck on a strat. If you, because of the, a strat has a radius on the end of it. So if you try to put a strat neck on a telly, you have to clear out the neck pocket for that radius, that curve on the end of it. So it'll work. So you can put a strat neck on a telly. But you can't put a telly neck on a strat unless you can re-drill the holes and you'll always have a gap right here at the end. Okay? Um, it does work. There are actually some goofy telly models with uh, strat necks on them. Um, or let me say that backwards. Is that right? Actually, I don't know. I. I saw one the other day and there was a gap in here because, because of that. But what you really want to do is change the shape of the end of the neck pocket. So, um, Alan, you asked that question earlier. I just wanted to kind of, so you could visualize that, just take a little bit out of right here, slide that neck down further in the guitar, and then you still will have your 12 and three quarters from the saddle to the 12th fret. So that was something that came in over the internet too. I guess I did not think about talking about that one some more. Uh, let's talk about, um, you know, I already have this other guitar plugged in. So let's grab this V. So for a long time, this was my favorite guitar. I played this, uh, I was playing in a band at the time, probably played this guitar I probably gigged it twice a week and I played it every day. Um, I play it less these days, but it is fantastic. Um, we're going to use this guitar to talk about our subject of coil splitting because someone asked today um, on YouTube to for me to do a video and I'll do an actual video for YouTube, but I told him that I would talk about it on our live show tonight. So we're, what we're going to talk about is how can we make coil splitting actually work? Because most of the time when you split a coil, so let's say we have this coil, right? This pickup right here in a normal PAF, E kind of pickup is about seven and a half K you know have an Alnico three or five magnet okay and when you split that coil that then becomes seven and a half well okay so whatever it's gonna become like 3.6 or so something something right right in there 3.6 K with a very small coil and not much magnet because humbuckers don't actually have a lot of magnet because of the way they're designed. Uh, they only have the edge of that magnet and then up through poles. So you went from 7.5K, 7.6, 7.8, down to 3.5, 3.6, okay? 3.6 is not even a whole pickup, right? When we're thinking of like a Strat pickup or something that's 5.9, 6.1, 6.2, so what we've done is we have cut the thing in half and we've made a very weak example of a guitar pickup. So it doesn't sound very good. So let's, let's hear that. This is what I'm talking about. Here, let's uh, clean this up. Hang on. Okay. So here we have, this is a super reverb pretty clean with nothing else on it except for a little bit of reverb, I think. All right, so that's the bridge pickup. Now let's coil split that and cut that in half. 
Now that is what people talk about when they say, I can't stand a coil split pickup because it sounds so weak. Right? And really there's no real way to fix that with this pickup because no matter what you do, when you cut it in half, you're cutting it completely in half. And what happens is you're, there's two things that happen. One is you lose the voltage. So we talk about the string moving over the pickup and when the string moves over the pickup, it, uh, it actually, it creates, it creates, um, inductance, which creates a voltage. Okay. And so we're actually cutting the potential down. We're cutting it in half. And so that perception to our ear, the thing is just super weak. Right. And see, it gets so much louder. Let's see. Let's catch up on some. Can I ask a question before you move on? Absolutely. Um, a personal question. We had this last week. Why am I getting your computer sound in my headphones? <laughs> oh, because. There we go. Thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> PAF stands for patent. App <laughs> uh, Dylan applied for. DAF stands for Dylan applied for. That's all it stands for. We made it up. Um, I, I'll tell you the story behind it. Um, here, let's I'll include Leslie in this conversation. So the reason we, we came up with this whole DAF thing is because um, I've been making these pickups for a couple years this way. And the editor, the managing editor of Premier Guitar, called me out of the blue one day and said, no, it wasn't, it wasn't John. It was Rich Osweiler. He was Rich Osweiler is another editor for premier guitar. He called me out of the blue one day. I have to interrupt you again uh -huh. before you play guitar. Um, your guitar is not coming through to the radio. It is not. Well, that's weird. <laughs> It's not coming through to the radio. That is what Jack says. Okay. So, hang on one second. And let's fix that really fast before. You know what? I bet it didn't come out before last week either. And to tell you the truth, um, I don't exactly know how to fix that on the fly so I think that might have fixed it yep I think that might have fixed it we'll see he said we're pretty much right on live there's not much delay so he's still talking to me I'll let you know okay Sounds good. Um, so anyway, Rich Osweiler from Premier Guitar called me up and he said, um, I want to feature your DAF or your humbucker pickups in the like the top 10 best pickups of 2016, I think it was. And I think we're good. OK. And he said, uh, what do you what do you call him? Because <laughs> he'd played him at Nam, And. I didn't really have a name. I just, they were just our humbuckers, you know? And so we had to name them. So that was actually Jimmy's idea. That was another friend of mine's idea. He's like, just call him Dylan applied for. You put your name on everything else. Just put your name on that too. Yeah. He wanted me to make little paper stickers and everything. But I And the funny thing is not many people ask. I mean, maybe they assume the person that asked the question tonight was like, I assume that's what it meant, but I wasn't sure. Um, but it is interesting that not many people do ask that. So maybe they assume, maybe they don't recognize that it's different. I don't know. Man, that sounds good. Okay, so let's did let's talk about demonstrating. Um, let's go back over to this other camera. So let's let's talk about now demonstrating how 
we can split a coil and still have it sound pretty good. So here is uh, the humbucker that we were just playing. <laughs> So now let's split that same coil and listen to it. So what's different? Because it really does sound like we can make it sound uh, real stratty, like... Uh, we can make it sound real stratty and it actually really really works well what is the difference that pickup that we're using in this guitar <clears throat> is our uh center punch and I always put them in the neck position of almost everything that I own. Uh, the reason for that is, and the reason it works better, is because what we've done is we've taken two um, different gauges of wire. And when we split the coil, we split off the one. So this is a 10.4K humbucker. And one coil is 6.3, and the other one is 4.6 or 7, something right in there. So it, it's right around 10.5K total. But when we split it, we split the 4.6K pick uh, coil off, and then we are left with 6.2. Well, 6.2, if you remember that number from a few minutes ago, is the same as a hot neck strat pickup. So we're still left with a whole pickup, not a half of a pickup. We're left with enough voltage from that pickup to be still be considered, you know, proper tone. On top of that, we're only cutting about 30% of the power of the pickup instead of 50. Now, if you listen really close, it is quieter. It does not keep full volume because technically it will never be able to keep full volume. But it the perception to your ear is a whole lot less because we're taking a lot less of the pickup away. And then it is still, there's still enough there to work with. Now there are other pickup companies um, that have done similar things. There's other pickup companies that, um, like Paul Reed Smith for instance, they have a whole circuit built into theirs with a capacitor and a resistor. But what they're doing is they're actually filtering off high frequencies to make the pickup sound not so weak. Um, that's it's a notch filter, basically, I, I guess, because we're going to talk about that when we do uh, veritone stuff in a few minutes. It's basically the same thing. They're putting a piece of a veritone in the pickup and then more or less. And then basically, but what they're doing is they're they're filtering. I'm not doing that. You're still getting uh you're still getting a pure single coil sound that has not been modified by an external circuit. Because when we get into our other conversation tonight about adding things to a guitar, we'll get back around to this subject right here. We'll come back around to it. So that's how we do it and it can be done. Um that this was the first pickup, the first humbucker that I ever made. And I'd never wanted, I didn't care about humbuckers except for this guitar right here. Uh, when this was given to me years ago, it had terrible pickups in it. And um, I could never get it to sound right. And I wanted a coil split and I wanted it to not get weak when I pulled the knob. And so I messed and messed and messed and messed and figured it out. And that's what we came up with. Um, and as a result of that, here's the other side benefit of that. When you take, uh, two coils and you wind them unevenly, you get a mid range peak in the middle. So 
uh, when you drive this thing, it, it cuts through a mix real, real nice. So here, I'll give you some of my, this is some of like my heavier tone from when I played in that band. And then the bridge pickup is still very, very like ACDC. Because that's just a DAF in the bridge. So, um, and you can, you can also notice that if you do this right, the number on the pickup doesn't necessarily mean that one's going to be louder than the other. So this is a 10 K pickup in the, in the neck. And this is an eight K pickup. 7.67 in the bridge. Because there's a big misconception. A lot of people think that you put a hotter pickup in the bridge and you put not as hot in the neck. Otherwise, it's not going to be that um, balanced. But what you're doing is actually trying to understand what frequencies you want to hear in the neck pickup versus in the bridge pickup. And one of the misconceptions that comes from that is when you have this big muddy boomy neck pickup but we don't have that we have a nice strong mid-range we have a lot of clarity and then that means that we can run it a lot hotter our um in fact like a vintage telecaster the neck pickup is a lot hotter than the bridge it, they came that way so you know just a little side point there uh about pickup output so let's go ahead and mute this and get this pick uh, this guitar unplugged. And I guess we'll get caught up on a couple questions, huh? Let's see. They tap their pickup so that they're not full output. So when they tap it, there's middle. Okay, so that is exactly right. So let's read this again. I read that PRS taps their humbuckers so that they are not full output. So when they tap them, there is minimal difference in output. Okay. It's kind of sort of exactly right. Basically, they there's a capacitor on the pickup that is a filter and it cuts it. It cuts certain frequencies from it. Then when you pull the knob, the circuit changes and it there's a less perceived difference between those two things. So after a fashion you're exactly right it's it's different ways of explaining it but that's that's pretty much pretty much the thing it's not tapped when it's they don't tap the coil down but they put a filter on it uh let's see so in a hum single hum am i getting half the single uh let's see so in a hum single hum that depends on the wiring so like an ibanez gem You've got a five position switch. All the way on the bottom is your bridge pickup. All the way at the top is your neck pickup. In the middle is your middle pickup. The two notch positions are typically half of the humbucker and the middle pickup on, you know, the ha like half of the neck humbucker and the middle pickup. And then the other notch position is typically the middle pickup and half the bridge humbucker. You could do those things different ways. There's a lot of different ways to wire that, but I think that's how a gem comes. From the factory so um yeah so you are getting half the pickup in a couple of those positions i'm gonna go ahead and swap this guitar out what else is going on over there um clarification on tapping versus splitting Ooh, that's a good one so the the assumption is that Tapping is done on single coils and splitting is on humbuckers to separate the coils. That is exactly right. So the way you do a tap on a single coil is you wind some wire, right? And then you stop. And then you take a wire and it comes off of there. And then you, so you're tapping out of the middle of the coil. And then you keep winding more and more and more and more 
and then at the end you have your other normal wire. So now you have a single coil with three wires. So then when you hook up your ground, and now you have two hots, and you can hook them up to the either side of a switch. So you can say, I want half the pickup now, and then when I pull the switch, I can have the whole pickup. That's tapping a single coil. So coil tapping is actually tapping off part of the power, just like you would a transformer or a faucet or, you know, that that's what you're doing. You know, the water is continuing somewhere else and you're just taking it off right here. That's a tap, right? That's no, I just learned something. That's exactly. Thanks. though. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> why they call it that. Um, and then splitting is we're splitting the pickup in half. Um, I had a guy one time call me and ask me if I, he would if I would do a coil tapped split humbucker to where there would be six wires and that you would be able to pick half of one and the whole of the other or vice versa or half of both of them and all or all of them. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This really weird. Um, I ended up not doing it for him because I told him how much it would cost because it was, yeah. it would be really annoying to do because they're so small. Right. Um, I mean, I could do it, but I just, I've, so I've never done that, but, um, Sounds like a challenge. I'll tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you two pickups that really respond well to tapping: Telecaster bridge pickups and P90s. You can do some really fun stuff with a tapped P90 and a tapped Telecaster bridge pickup. Super fun stuff. Um, let's see. You have a single coil pickup now that is 15k. How does that compare to a 15k humbucker? Are they the same output? Um, remember when we talked about our really super nerdy conversation last week about how pickups work? Um, so let's just break that down for a second. Remember that 15K, when you put your meter on the pickup and you, um, you know, and you're measuring that pickup. Remember that all that's really giving you is the length of the wire on the coil. Okay. So you could have, let's say you could have a 15 K coil, right? And you could put two big magnets on the bottom and then you could have a 15 K coil and put one weak magnet on the bottom. Those two pickups would have different levels of inductance and would create different amounts of voltage and they would sound differently even if the number was still the same a 15k single coil is probably i'd be curious to know what guitar that's in uh that is a common thing to see in a less expensive guitar where they've got two ceramic bars on the bottom with metal pole pieces around a single coil so like a mm, like a mexican telecaster bridge pickup is an excellent example of that or um, any of the the asian made uh, stratocasters because like we talked about before what they'll do is because the parts are less expensive and the magnets are not as high quality they end up being very edgy sounding like really piercing and, and harsh so then they'll wrap a lot of wire around or use a small diameter wire and come up with that 15k pickup so that it kind of balances itself out and they can use less expensive uh, less expensive uh, products a humbucker the coil dimension number one is way different the magnets are different and the frequency cut that you get when you put two two coils together they're going to sound completely differently. Um, and I would venture to say that the output of them is going to be different. So we just we just did this in our little experiment a few minutes ago. Did you notice when, when I played the 10K neck pickup and the 7.8K bridge pickup that the volume between the two was very even? The reason for this is... It's not so much the number on the pickup and the amount of power, how loud the pickup is. It's the frequencies that you hear. 
Remember that a guitar is like a vocal instrument. It's like your voice, right? So those mid-range frequencies that we hear the most, right around 1K and then spreading out from there a little bit, um, those are what's most important to a guitar. Um, so what we're really concerned about is what can we hear? If we have a really super muddy bassy pickup, it might not sound as loud as a really high-end, super piercing high-end pickup because it's cutting through and we can hear it. Then we go ahead and get it with another bunch of instruments and we don't hear either of those pickups because there's no mid-range and we don't, we've not found our sonic space. Um, that's a John Bollinger thing. Uh, that he always says that I love how, the, how, how he says it's not so much the number on the pickup or the power of it or the output of it as much as do you have the right pickup to put your guitar in it like John says in the sonic space that you're trying to put it in so you could have uh, a 17k pickup with you know neo bleh 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 bleh, whatever however you say that magnets <clears throat> Uh, you know, like an eight string that's all chuggy and do, 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 right. And then set it next to a bass player and not hear it. It could be the highest output pickups you could buy, but put it next to a bass player because they may, they are occupying the same sonic space over here in this low end. You don't hear the guitar. So it's all about understanding what sonic space you want to acquire. Uh, what you want to occupy on the stage or in your bedroom or wherever you're playing, it doesn't matter. And then having the pickup that does that. That's, and that's why we spend more time talking to a customer than I actually do making the pickup because um, when we do this stuff, we want to make sure that the person gets the right thing, right? You want to make sure you get that. So it's not just about that number. And the funny part about this question that, that you brought up, is that you would think that I could explain it and then you could go make your next purchasing choice just based on understanding a number. But what re what it really is, is it becomes a thing where you have to discuss it with a person and you can't just pull it off the shelf. You can pull it off the shelf, but you'll guess a lot more, right? Getting it right the first time is having a conversation and figuring it out. So the guitar that he was referring to yes. is custom Duncan pickups. It's in a Strat with El Nico five rods. Yeah, so that's probably on SS. I can never remember their names, but yeah, that's probably like forty three or forty four gauge wire wrapped around El Nico fives. Super, super hot, super hot stuff. Can you recommend a good splittable Tele bridge pickup? Um. I will make you one. I will make you one. Yes, I can recommend you one. Shoot me a message. And again, so again, this comes down to um, having a conversation. I can say, recommend you a good split telly, splittable telly bridge pickup. Yes, I can recommend that. But shoot me a message and we'll talk about what you're actually looking for um, because we can make it any which way. Um, and, and have that conversation like we were just saying and come up with something really cool for you. Um, but yeah, it totally can be done. Uh, P90s are the best. What do you think mechanically or in their design makes them so versatile with not only great cleans, but they sound amazing with drive? Uh, that's an interesting question. That is coil shape. Um, P90s are flat and wide where a strat is narrow and tall. On top of that, they also have um, way, way more magnet than any other pickup because they have two humbucker bars underneath there. So um, it, we could get into super nerdy stuff about that, um, but the, the bottom line is they can create a lot of voltage with fairly low capacitance. So the highs are really nice, crisp and clear. They've got great mid range and they can create a lot of voltage to hit your amp or hit your pedals really hard. But because the capacitance is so low because um, of the coil shape, they're also very dynamic. So when you pull that pickup back with the knob, then they can clean up and be, be very versatile. 
It is their design. It, I agree. It is why they are the best. They're my favorite too. Um, I don't actually have a guitar with P90s in it right now because I sold it. The orange one went to Texas, but they really are my favorite. Absolutely. I totally agree. Uh, let's see what else we got. Have you ever used rare earth magnets in a pickup build? Um, rare earth is a little bit of a misnomer. Um, they all are. So rare earth versus ceramic. There are, um, there are some alloys that are not considered rare earth and there are some that are, yes, I have, um, it's not really, I could do it and you wouldn't know the difference. I'll just say that. Um, that's, that's the I have thing a here. subsequent question. Okay. That. Awesome. This is fun. Would it be possible to put a controllable electromagnet in a pickup and then you could vary the strength of the magnet? Wow. That is exactly what you could do. I have not seen. So here's the thing. How, how does string gauge affect? That's a different output? question. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I've not seen like technical drawings on the, who's the Greg Coke pickups, uh, Fishman fluence, but I have a feeling uh, yeah. that they are doing something with those stacked circuit board magnetic plates mm -hmm. and a battery that is allowing them to adjust the inductance in the pickup. And I really think, I, I don't know for sure, but somebody's going to do that. The, there's the dilatone people that change mm -hmm. the resistance of the coil. Yep. So they've got, they've got resistance and capacitance of the coil. They're basically putting a veritone on a, on a pickup. Um, which I, I don't like as much, but it's very cool. It's a great idea. It's it's a thing that could be perfected, I think. Um, but that right there, or wherever you are in the internets right now, that right there is a cool idea to be able to vary. To package it and make it work would be a whole nother story. And I really think that it would take some 21st century technology. I'm... I, I don't know for sure if that's what Fishman is doing, but I've seen the parts and I can almost mm. imagine that it's possible that that's what that is. That's cool. Yeah. And I could be completely, totally wrong. Don't take me. I mean, I'm literally imagining. I'm looking at the parts, looking at the question that was just answered and thinking, I wonder if that's what they're doing. But that's all it is. It's I, I do not know. I have no idea. I've not seen enough to know for sure. Um, how does string gauge affect output and tone of a pickup? Are your pickups designed with string gauge in mind? All right. This is a huge thing. Um, because I've made these videos. I made a video about putting sevens on your guitar and how it changes the tone and stuff. And people got really mad at me because they said, Oh, it kills tone and this and that. Yes. The, mag the string, the mass of the string does make a difference. That's why your high E sounds different than your low E, even if you tune them to the same pitch. They do sound different. That's why um, playing a chord in one position versus the other position, even though it's the same timber, sounds different because you're using different parts of the string, the different motion of the string, everything. Um, so, yeah, it does make a difference. I do not design my pickups with um them with tone in mind i will tell you i have been uh how do you do wanna... not design your pickups with tone in mind i mean i no i do uh <laughs> that's funny i was that's like a wait, total, what that's a total faux pas right there with um with strings in mind having an effect on the tone i don't i don't because um there's, that's just too much of a variable. Everybody's using different stuff. Um, I test everything with tens, but I will tell you, I've been gravitating towards heavier strings because I've been playing harder. Um, lately, this guitar in front of me, this Jazzmaster that we built this week, 
uh, that we finished this week. Um, that thing has 11s on it. Some guitars just like it. They mm-hmm. just like having 11s on them. Uh, and a Jazzmaster is one. It's because of the break angle of the bridge and how it all works. It just it doesn't even feel like it has 11s on it. It just works better. And then this one behind me on the wall actually has 13s on it. Uh, that is 13 to 52 strings on it. The V? Mm-hmm. Really super heavy. Huh. Because I was doing some down tune, half step down stuff with it. And so I put heavy strings on it and I never took them off. I just, I just really like them. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about uh, one of our other subjects tonight. Um, cause this kind of gets back around to what we were discussing. Can you add tone? So this is sounds stupid. I couldn't think of any way to say it that would fit on my little <laughs> graphic right here is really why we, why we did it this Gotta way. Keep it short, simple. Yeah. I only had so many characters to work with. I apologize. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about that because let me grab this other guitar. Sorry for the dead air and the guitar pick in my mouth. So we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about tone. And what I mean by can, can you add tone is this is kind of what we were discussing earlier. Um, with this whole Paul Reed Smith uh, pickups with the capacitors in them and them giving you the perception of more power when actually what they were doing was taking something away. Now, this is a great guitar to use to explain this with. We did it. We actually just uploaded a video. Um, we actually just uploaded a video today that we demonstrated this uh, even more, but we'll get into it in just a second. I just see a question coming in. Isn't a jazz master a short scale? Do you feel that short scale guitars need heavy strings just for tension? Uh, nope. A jazz master is 25 and a half. A Mustang is 24. You're thinking of a Mustang, which looks kind of the same, but it's not. Um, the body is very similar. They have different wiring and different switches. And, um, and you're thinking of a Mustang. So, yeah, if you're... Is Jaguar the same? 24. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. We have very educated listeners. Yeah, absolutely. It's awesome. All right, hang on. All right, so... So, we're going to explain. We're going we're gonna to show you what I'm talking about, about adding stuff. So, everybody... Uh, You know, I guess the easiest way to say this is the purest tone ever, the most potential that a pickup will be able to make is when you have a pickup, a wire, and an output jack. That's it with nothing else in it. And we've done, you know, a bunch of videos, you know, the, our most popular video we've ever made, I think is the, um, 500 K pots versus 250 K pots. Right. Um, and it's 948. We're going to run out of time. Talk faster. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you, um, let's turn all of this up. Let's crank it all up. And let's give us some cleaner stuff. All right. So here's the neck pickup. Now here's the neck pickup without this circuit in it. is adding two pots and a capacitor with the volume all the way up. So the least amount of effect effect possible. So what I'm getting at here is anytime you add a component in a guitar, anytime, um, whether it's in a treble bleed uh, volume circuit, whether it's a tone capacitor, whether it's an extra switch, an extra pot, 
um, a kill switch, anything, you're adding resistance or capacitance to the circuit, which is changing the overall inductance of the circuit, which is changing your tone. Anytime you add anything, unless, unless it is a active guitar, then you have a preamp in there and it doesn't matter because you're, you're juicing it up. And people will say, well, yeah, but if I put a treble bleed on it and then I turn the volume down, that doesn't go away as fast. No, all you're really doing is you put a, you're filtering it differently. That's all you're doing. You're just changing the frequencies that are being filtered. And so the perception in your brain is that you're doing less to the signal when in actuality, that's not really true. Sort of like what we were talking about earlier with these pickups that have, uh, basically an LC circuit in them that makes it to where it sounds like they're not split. And then when they split them, they don't sound split. Like it's, it's a, it's a, it makes them sound like they're already split. And then when they split them, they're not split. You know what I mean? It's, it, it is literally that confusing to your brain. So you don't, you can't tell the difference, but those pickups, if you pull those pieces out, will sound different. They will sound, they'll have more clarity. They will, I just don't like it. I don't like that way of doing it. So you want to hear a funny somebody had in the comment? Sure. He said most PRS owners are tone deaf. That's why they don't know any difference in tone. <laughs> I think they just like the pretty wood. That is my. Those are pretty guitars. They're absolutely pretty. Let's see. What do we got here? I'm putting some in my Firebird and I already have the pickups. Do you think it would be possible to make red P90 covers? Um, there's a way to do some fun stuff with P90 covers. Uh, shoot me a message and I'll, um, I'll, I'll help you out with that. We can, we can do some fun stuff with P90s. You can do, they're not traditional looking, but you can do some fun stuff with them. So anyway, I just wanted to share that part. And basically the, th the th thought I had on Veritones, we're going to have to do a whole video just on Veritones, but basically that's why having one in your guitar is always going to suck a little tone. And uh, something came up on YouTube today. Somebody was like, well, I thought position one on a Veritone on an Epiphone Lucille is a true bypass. It's not because there's actually a coil and a hundred, uh, hundred ohm resistor in there. So there's always a little something coming off the top. Anytime you put parts in a guitar, you're going to be taking something off the top. That's all there is. That's all there is to it. What else you got going over there? Um, talking about learning Sons of Texas songs. Oh my goodness. That's so funny. I just talked to him the other a day. A lot of good discussion. I mean, they're like, I don't mean there's good discussion. I'm saying people really seem to appreciate the discussion that we've had tonight. Oh, awesome. That they got a lot of value out of it. Excellent. Yeah. And if you have things you want to add or th uh, things that, we missed or you say hey you breezed over this can we talk about it more next week that's exactly the kind of input that we love um the super or the uh the chat thing will go away after the show is over after a few minutes it's there for a few minutes but then yeah. it, it goes away um yeah but, this is only good during the live show so if right. there's anything we missed or didn't cover when the video gets rendered make sure you ask your question yeah again. ask your question in the comments on the video and or on I our facebook be page responding. he'll actually be responding yeah um on our facebook page uh you know on instagram anywhere really you know on the internet i'll try to get to you but i always really try to make sure that i keep up with the youtube stuff um i hope that we get so huge one day that i literally have to work really hard to do that because I always want to make sure that we connect with everybody. Um, you know, even people that aren't so nice, I still try to, to connect with them and understand them. You know, like I um, had some people today, they weren't super nice, but still trying to understand because if, if we're doing something, if we're, if we're making content that people don't like or, you know, Oh, for sure. Then I, wanted, I mean, feedback I is know. feedback. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So understanding, are you just being a smart ass right now? Or do I really need to change something, right. you know, to, to be better? Cause we want to make it better. So, and I hope that this 
format over the last few weeks and all the equipment we bought and everything, making it sound better and all that kind of stuff is really working because I think it is. And I really appreciate it. Um, really appreciate the, the feedback and stuff. Um, it is 9.54. We have time to probably squeeze in one or two more. Okay. Quick So ones. just a couple of comments. I would love to walk through the PRS vault and pick my own wood blanks. Um, PRS pickups are the best because Paul says so. What a bunch of cork sniffers. <laughs> um, so in your opinion, what is the best way to wire a kill switch? Is that too complicated? Nope. It's super easy. Um, momentary switch, either a toggle or a push button. And do it on the lead that goes from the volume to the, well, there's a couple of different ways to do it, but I just on the, vo- on the lead that co- goes from the volume pot to the output jack. Um, some people will disagree with you cause you get a little pop there, but it just depends on, you could put a capacitor on it to pad that, but then you, you suck tone out of it. So. <laughs> You know, it's a give and take thing. But that's what I would do. Momentary switch. Ready for another one? Yep. Seymour Duncan has used aluminum wire for a special pickup. What do you think of copper versus aluminum wire? Um, I think that he can do that. And that's really cool. And if you want one, you can go buy one. Because let me tell you, aluminum wire is so brittle. And so hard to work with that I will never do it. Um, the inductance is different. I mean, silver also. You know, you can buy those silver pickups that cost like a thousand bucks a set. Yeah. You know, um, and they're amazing. They are amazing. Those silver pickups are really amazing. I've played them before, but they're a thousand dollars a set and the wire is super brittle. So. Um, it, it's not a practical, in my opinion, it's not a practical thing. Um, with higher gauge, uh, pickups with higher gauge wire in, in coils, they work, you know, like in a, in a transformer or something, there's a lot of, right. you know, for your house, like a lot of those things, that's all aluminum, but no, not in a guitar pickup. It's not practical is, is the answer. So I wouldn't waste my time with it really. Awesome. Cool. Probably less than three minutes to go. Awesome. I think we covered all of the questions, though. Excellent. Well, I really appreciate everybody hanging out with us every Monday night. This is really fun, and I needed this today. I'm going to tell you. I had fun today. I made a lot of videos. I got up this morning, and I made videos from the time I got up. I edited videos. I've got more to edit. I've got two more, I think, that I've shot that I've not edited yet. So, um... I've been working really hard on good content. We had, we released two videos today. I, it's not very often that I do that. And so this has been really fun and I really needed it today to just hang out with you all. Um, make sure that you do check out our show every week. Um, tomorrow you'll be able to listen to it live. Uh, you know, listen, you'll be able to listen to the replay on uh, kprlive.com. I'm still having a little problem with that. So, You'll see hopefully an improvement in that tomorrow. Um, and do me a favor and go. I'm just going to plug my own stuff. I don't do it very often and probably not enough. Go check out DylanTalksTone.com. We have a lot of really cool stuff there. A lot of really cool replacement parts. Um, I don't know if you know that or not, but we carry a lot of like bridges and saddles and tuners and all kinds of stuff. And if you have a guitar and you go there and say, I don't see the tuners that fit my guitar, just shoot me a message. Uh, we probably do carry it. I just I just show the stuff on the website that's my favorite and that we use the most of. That doesn't mean that I don't have what you need. So just, you know, let me know and we'll do what we can. I appreciate everybody hanging out with us this week and, um, you know, all that thanks stuff. Thanks for chatting with yeah. me, everybody. Thanks, thanks for hanging out and uh, we will talk to you all uh, next time we do this on Dylan Talks Tone. And maybe we don't have the music again. Because I always do that. Learning. It's okay. <laughs>